To create this diverging bar chart, I'll be using two data sources, one for sales and one for cost. Then between the bars, I'll calculate the net by blending the data sources. I'll add these darker circles to show the max values, and I'll filter down to the last eight quarters. I'll start with the sales bar. So I'm gonna click on the order sales data source and bring sales into the rows. And I'll bring order date into the columns. Then I'll right click on order date and I'll change this to be in quarters. And this is purely for the design of it, but I like rounded bar charts. So I'm gonna go ahead and make these rounded. To do that, I'll bring measure values into the rows before sales. I'll type zero into the measure values and remove all the ones that we don't need. Then I'll reorder sales below the zero. For the first mark, it's already set as a line, but I want the measure names to determine the path of the line. And you can see we get this crazy weird line when we do this, and that's because we have a continuous column. So I'm gonna right click on our order date and make it discrete. Now we get those bars, and if I increase the size using the size slider in the marks, you can see they're rounded bars. And since this is gonna represent sales, which is positive, I'm gonna to go to color in the marks and change this to be a light green. And I'm gonna use this second line down here as a marker, but I only want the marker to appear for the maximum sales bar within our view. So under the second mark, instead of changing it to a circle, I'm gonna change it to a shape. And my little hack for getting the shapes to disappear where I don't want them to show is to use a transparent image as a shape. I've loaded this empty shape into Tableau, and I'll include this in the description, but it's basically just a blank image you can use wherever you want the shape to be invisible. So you can see it's not colored as the same background or anything here, it's just an empty shape. For identifying the quarter with the maximum sales, I'm gonna create a calculated field called max sales. In here I'll type the window max of the sum of sales, and I'll set this equal to the sum of sales. So this will only return true when it's the max value. I'll pull this field into the second marks, and I want this to determine the shape. Then I'll edit the shapes legend, and for false, I'm gonna choose that empty shape I created. For true, I'll select a filled in circle. So now we only have a circle for the quarter with the maximum sales. To get these on the same plane, I'm gonna right click on the sum of sales and make this a dual axis. Then I'll right click on the axis to synchronize them. And you can use the size slider in the marks to adjust the size of the circle and the size of the bars. For the color of the circle, I'm gonna choose a darker green. Then I'll remove both of our axes and I'll hide the field label. For formatting the worksheet, I'm gonna change the shading of the worksheet to none. And for borders, I'm gonna get rid of the row divider and the column divider. Under lines, I'll remove the zero lines. And for the rows, I'm gonna remove the grid lines. So now that we have our sales bars, I also wanna create the cost bars and show the net between them. These two data sources currently don't have any unique identifier between them. This is why I added the tables in as separate data sources, even though they're in the same sheet in Excel. So instead of joining the data together, I'm gonna blend them. And while we don't have a unique identifier between them currently, I can see that the sales data has an order date field and the cost data has a quarter year field. So I can use the order date field to derive the quarter year for the sales data. I'll create a calculated field called quarter year and type the string of year of the order date plus in quotes space Q plus the string of the quarter of the order date. And you can see the format our quarter year is in within the sales data. And that matches the format from our cost data. To blend these, I'll go to the data tab at the top and hit edit blend relationships. I want the sales data to be the primary data source and the cost data to be the secondary. I'll make this a custom blend 
and add the field that I want the data sources to be blended on, which is quarter year. Now I can pull sales in from our sales data source and costs in from our cost data source. However, just because they're blended does not mean they're joined. So if I create a calculated field for the net, and I'll just paste in this formula that I would use, you can see there's two errors that we get. And even if I change the quarter year to the quarter year from the cost data, we're still getting an error. And that's because if we want to use two fields from different data sources that are not joined together, we need to aggregate them first. So I'll keep the first part of my statement, which is just the sum of sales for each quarter year, and I'll rename this to be the sales quarter total. And instead of creating the cost one within the sales data, I'm going to go to the cost data source. Then I'll create a calculated field for the cost quarter total. And this is the exact same formula, but with costs instead of sales. Now if I go back to the sales data source and I create a calculative field for the net, I can use these two calculative fields that I created within their own data sources. So I'll do the sales quarter total minus the cost quarter total. And you can see it's summing up the right side, so I need a sum of the left side as well. And now we have no errors, but we've created a calculation using fields from different data sources. To show all of these together, I'm going to put the sales quarter total in the view. I'll move the net into the view. And I'll put quarter year in the columns. Within the cost data, I'm going to move the cost quarter total into the view as well. Blending lets us use fields from multiple data sources in a view and create calculations across them. While you could join the data in some cases, sometimes data sources can't be joined directly or they lack a unique identifier, or you just want to avoid writing SQL. And I joined it here so I could create this calculated field for the net of sales and cost. I want to display these values between my diverging bar chart. So under Show Me, I want to change this to a table. Then I'll click this button to swap the rows and columns. I'll right-click on the header to uncheck Show Header. And I'll format the worksheet to remove the shading for the worksheet, and for the borders, remove the row divider. To change the number format, I'm gonna right click format on the measure. And under numbers, I'll set this to a custom currency with no decimals. And I'll display the units in thousands. Now that we have our sales bars and net, I'll create a new worksheet for the cost bars. First, I need to select the cost data source. And I'll do a similar method I did for building the sales bars. So I'll drag quarter year into the columns and measure values and costs into the rows. Then under the measure values, I'm gonna type zero. And I'll remove all the ones that we don't need so we're left with just zero and cost. To get the diverging bar chart effect, I'll type a negative in front of the sum of cost. So you can see how it flipped the bars upside down. I'll also do this for our cost in the rows. For the first mark, I'm going to change this to a line and move measure names in. And I want the measure names to determine the path of the line. I'll use a size slider to increase the size of the bars. And I'll use color in the marks to change this to a light red pink color, since this is for cost. For the second mark, I need to do the same thing I did for sales and create a calculated field for the max cost. In here, I'll type the window max of the sum of cost and set that equal to the sum of cost. Then I'll drag this true false field into the second marks and I'm going to change the mark type to a shape. And I want our calculated field to determine the shape. Then I'll edit our shapes legend and for false, I want to choose that transparent background. That way it remains invisible. For true, I want to choose a filled in circle, since true represents the quarter with the maximum cost. Then I'll right click on one of the rows and make this a dual access. And then I'll right click on the access to make them synchronized. I'm going to make the circle a little bit smaller and I'll change the color to a darker pink. And instead of formatting the cost bars to look like the sales bars, I'm going to right click on the sales bar worksheet 
and copy the formatting. Then on the cost bar worksheet, I'll paste the formatting. Then I'll right click on the right access to uncheck show header. And I also want to hide the field labels. And now we can add these charts to a dashboard. I'll drag them all in and I'll hide the title of each worksheet. And we don't need the legends anymore, so I'm going to remove those. I'll position these so that cost is at the bottom and the net is in the middle. And I want to set the net to the entire view. Then I'll put sales at the top. And we can already identify the quarter year from the cost bars, so I'm going to remove it from the sales bars. These are a lot of quarters to display on an overview tab. I don't really want to be looking at the last three years, so I'm going to filter it to the last eight quarters. And I'll show this little trick on a new worksheet so I can bring in our quarter year field. Then I'll create a calculated field for our quarter year sequence. And this formula is going to take the year, multiply it by four, and add the quarter. And since our quarter year field is a string, I need to extract the left four digits to get the year. And I'll extract the right digit to get the quarter. To use these in the calculation, I need to wrap them in the integer function. So this is creating a sequential numbering system for the quarter year values. So within the view, you can see that for each period, like Q1 2024 and Q2 2024, it's one number apart. And while you can easily filter for the last X quarters using a date field in Tableau, for string fields like fiscal year data, this creates an ordinary sequence that we can use in our filter. To get the last eight quarters, I'll pull our quarter year field into the filters. Then I'll choose top and do it by field. So I'm gonna select the top eight using the quarter year sequence field and taking the average. And now, even when new data comes along, like 2025, it'll always filter for the last eight quarters. To filter our other worksheets, I'm going to right-click on the filter, go to Apply to Selected Worksheets, and I'll check off our cost bar, net, and sales bar. And now we have a dynamic filter that automatically captures the last X quarters of data, regardless of which quarter years are in the data set. To label this visual, I'll bring in a text object, and I'll call this Sales and Cost. I'll set this to Tableau Regular and size 14, and I want this to be a darker color. I also want to label the net, so I'm going to copy and paste the text box and edit the text to be net. I'll set this to Tableau Medium and size 9 font so it matches our actual values for net. Then I'll format the net worksheet and change the color of the values to be darker, the alignment of the values to be horizontally centered, and the color of the worksheet to match the color of the container. That way I can overlap the net and the rounded bars to give it a more square rounded effect. And to get that effect, I need to bring the floating order of the net worksheet to the front. And after adjusting the positioning, we have a diverging bar chart that shows the sales above and the costs below a central axis. The center displays the net values representing the difference between the sales and costs for each period. And we've added markers to highlight the quarters with the maximum values for sales and cost. 